Friends, I am so excited about this video because it is a good one. All these recipes are so good. We are doing another cake box video because you guys love this one every time we do this. And it's perfect timing because it is my job to take dessert to church tomorrow night. We're gonna make three different desserts, three different box cake. We've got a chocolate, we've got a white, and we've got a strawberry. Three different desserts using box cake mix. And I wanna preface this video by saying, because I get this comment in almost every single one of these videos, maybe the ingredients in a box of cake mix doesn't work for you, or you can't have some of them, or you don't like some of them, or whatever it may be. If you are interested in making your own box of cake mix, in one of the previous videos that I did, I actually walked you through how to make a box cake mix. We just store it in the pantry. Honestly, if I'm making something for our home, that's what I use. If I'm taking something to, like to church and we're serving that many people, I'll pick something like this up because it is super convenient and easy to use. But you can go either way. I will have that video linked so that you can see it if you want to get the recipe to make your own box of cake mix. This one I am so excited about. We're starting with the white cake mix and this is one of my favorite flavors of all time we are making a pistachio bundt cake i love pistachio if you don't like pistachio you can change up the flavor you actually are going to be using some instant pudding you can use different flavors of pudding it doesn't have to be pistachio if you're not a pistachio fan but i love it if i go out and get coffee that's like my go-to coffee flavor pistachio so good we need to start by heating our oven to 350 degrees this is so easy and it's just a few ingredients add in all of the white cake mix Ooh, what is this recipe on the side cannoli cupcakes y'all in this uh measuring cup measure yes measuring cup i have one cup of water and a half cup of oil i'm gonna add both of those in we need two of the pistachio jello it's an instant jello it, or it's jello instant pudding it's by jello the brand Now, although I'm very excited about this one, I'm a little nervous because I really need a new bunt uh, pan thing, cake pan. Mine is really old and things stick kinda a lot. So we'll see how this one goes. Okay, adding both of those in. Okay, now we're just gonna start to mix all of this together and you're gonna start to see that green color. You can obviously do this in a mixer if you want to, or you can use your, um, hand mixer. Oh, this would have been fun for St. Patrick's Day. Still really pretty like for Easter table or something like that though, because these, you know, nice bright colors, actually any of these would be perfect for Easter lunch. Take that into consideration. Now we need to add in eggs and we're gonna add two eggs, but we're gonna add them one at a time. And for those of you that are worried about the fact that I don't crack them into another bowl, my mom is also very concerned about that too. It, it bugs her that I do that. Like it, re it really bugs her. <laughs> she tells me all the time. She was like, you need to crack them in another bowl first. Yes, I'm aware that I should do that. Okay, cool. Less worried about the eggs, more concerned about my spatula not staying together. Let's get a stronger one. I used to have pistachio extract, and I was gonna add a little bit into this, but apparently we do not have that anymore. I bet it expired. Y'all, it has been such a productive day. We did school this morning. I vacuumed and mopped our downstairs. I took my car to the car wash. I washed it, vacuumed it out, did all the things. So it's been a good one. I think I just said two eggs, but it's five eggs. I don't know what I'm thinking. Oh, forget it, this is absurd. Y'all, I have a hand mixer and a KitchenAid mixer, and I'm trying to be like Little House on the Prairie over here. There's nothing wrong with doing it that way, but when you have the equipment, hello. All right, now you may not have to do this because this pan is so old and it does have a few scratches on the inside. I usually spray it really well. And on top of that, I sprinkle in some flour to just really 
crossing my fingers, hoping that nothing sticks. It's one of those things where I forget that I need a new bunt pan until I go to use the bunt pan. Okay, now we can pour into our floured and greased bunt pan. My oven still is not quite at 350. We actually think the heating element is bad in our oven. We get an error message every single time we turn it on and we have to restart the oven every time. So that's what we think it is, but it does take a long time to preheat. Once the oven is completely done preheating, this is gonna go into the 350 degree oven and it's gonna take about 50 to 60 minutes. I'll definitely start at that 50 minute mark, check it by putting a toothpick in the center and making sure that it's done all the way before we pull it. All right, the bunt cake has been in there for 50 minutes. The timer is going off any second. We're gonna pull that out, check it, and see if it needs to go back in. All right, at first glance, I'm just not convinced. Oh, maybe it is done. Hey, that came out clean. This has been cooling for about 15 minutes. I'm gonna transfer it to a plate. It's not our prettiest plate, but I gotta figure out what I'm gonna serve this on. Oh, yay! Y'all, sometimes this thing sticks really bad. Now, I'm gonna let this cool just a little bit more now that it's out of the pan, and then I'm gonna sprinkle with powdered sugar and we'll cut it into slices, and it's gonna be so pretty. You can also make a frosting for this. This is kind of a lighter dessert, in my opinion, less on the sweet side. So I kind of like it like this, to be honest. Pistachio bundt cake. I reserved a piece out so I could try it. It is a very spongy cake, almost more like an uh, angel food cake. And I think the way to change that and make it more bundt cake is less eggs. So I would probably do three eggs if you want a less spongy texture. For me though, this is the perfect dessert. I don't prefer really, really sweet desserts. I'm more of a savory girl. And so it's not too sweet. It's light, it's airy. I do think that if you have pistachio extract, put a teaspoon or so of pistachio extract in the batter and you're gonna get even more of that flavor, which is so good. But I actually really love the consistency of this. We are making some strawberry lemonade cake bars. These are just so perfect for spring and summer. I have one cup of softened butter here in the bowl and I'm going to add a box of strawberry cake mix. I am gonna be using my mixer in just a minute here. I'm gonna work a little smarter than I did on the last one. We also need one egg into this mixture. Let's mix all of that together. We'll use a handy dandy spoon. Now this is gonna be a little thicker of a mixture. Um, it's kind of like if you ever saw me make butter bars or ooey gooey butter bars, like the there's a Paula Deen recipe called that. My grandma always calls them butter bars and that's how we make them. I've made those here before. I think it was in my last cake box video, but it's similar to that in that the bottom layer is a, it's kind of a thicker, layer and you press it into your pan. If you wanna see those ooey gooey butter bars, I'll definitely have that linked in the description box or in the cards above. I can't stand that noise. Put a towel down. Also, if you guys have not tried these towels, Geometry House towels, I always have a link in my description box for them and you can get 15% off. This is not sponsored. I, I just genuinely love the towels. Um, they dry stuff so fast. We basically have switched all of our kitchen towels over to Geometry House towels. I'm gonna wash my hands, even though I washed before I started this, I'm gonna wash my hands because we're gonna be touching a lot of stuff. Let's spray the pan first. Take this mixture into the nine by 13 pan that we've sprayed and we're gonna press this out all along the bottom. So you wanna try and get as even of a layer as possible. That is what you're looking for. I feel like whenever my grandma or my mom makes the butter bars, their bottom layer is always perfect and mine is always like, like this. <laughs> 
I'm, I'm never looking for perfection. I'm looking for, um, I just wanna eat them. All right, we can set this to the side. We need to make the next layer. I've got some powdered sugar. We need three cups, so not really a small amount. Don't start these unless you have a good amount of powdered sugar on hand. We've got four tablespoons or a half a stick of uh, room temperature butter. Now I'm gonna use my mixer here. Let's start with one tablespoon of lemon juice and mix that. We're looking for a thick frosting consistency and we did not get that yet. So we're gonna add another, let's start with a half tablespoon, but you can go up to another full tablespoon if you feel like you need it. That put us at the thick frosting consistency so we can start to add our other ingredients in. We've got eight ounces of room temperature or softened cream cheese. I'm gonna add all of that in. We're gonna add a little bit of food coloring. This is a food coloring that has, it's like natural food coloring, so it doesn't have all your dyes in it. Let me just tell you, it does not work quite as well. We are gonna add a few drops and see if we can turn this yellow, but I don't have high hopes, okay? If you really want yours to be yellow, you can use the regular food coloring. This is what we have to have in our house for my son. So we're gonna add, let's start with like four drops and just, we'll see, we'll see how it goes. Actually impressed, the yellow works. The red and the blue, they're not. <laughs> they don't work very well at all, but the yellow is good. Just want this to be nice and creamy, nice and mixed together. I'm gonna pull some out now because we can use this later for frosting. So I'm gonna pull out a cup or so, three-fourths of a cup or so, just a few. We're gonna set that to the side and add in two eggs. We wanna beat this together until it's nice and fluffy. The next layer is done. We need to take this whole layer and we're gonna put it on top of this one. So I did get kind of a yellow. I'm, I'm impressed. I try and get as close to the center with this as possible just because I feel like I wanna try and not get it all over the edges of the pan. I've learned this from making the butter bars that at the edges of the pan, it just gives more like a burnt look. I mean, it's not burnt, but it just gets more brown. And I wanna try and keep it clean looking as much as possible. Okay, so then we can just push. So you go all the way to the edge, but I'm trying to prevent coming up too high, basically, if that makes sense. It probably doesn't. In my head, it does. Now you do want it to be as even as possible. When my grandma does this, it always looks so pretty. She does like a little swirl thing here at the top that looks so nice. This goes in a 350 degree oven. It bakes for about 25 to 30 minutes. We also do have that reserved frosting that we can add to the top and it just adds another layer on top of this. But let's go into the oven with this one. Okay, the frosting that I made was in the refrigerator, so it's a little harder now than it was before. But I'm going to very lightly frost these. Oh no! I softened it up a bit so that it would be easier to spread, and then it'll harden back up. Lightly spread this around. I will cut a piece so that I can try it for you all. And then what usually happens is we take this and then we pre-cut all of this and set it out on plates for everybody, so. Nobody will notice that there is a piece missing. Honestly, nobody would care anyway. They are just thankful to have desserts. <laughs> Every single person there. So fun. You can see the layers. I bet it's even better in the middle. I mean, since this is a corner piece, it's harder to see those layers, but you've got the strawberry, the lemon flavor, and then the icing on top. Okay, give it a try. Good flavor. I ended up leaving it in for 35 minutes because the middle really wasn't getting done, but I do think that I should have taken it out at 30. But our oven is so finicky though, so you might not have that issue. Like you might take yours out at 25 minutes and it's completely fine. It's sweet, it's tangy, it's strawberry, it's lemony. I actually really like this and I'm curious after it sits for a little bit, if it's gonna be even better. Good flavors here. We are making cake pucks. If you haven't seen these, they are so neat. 
Very similar to cake pops, which you know are like one, two bites. Cake pucks are a little bit more. It starts with a very basic recipe. You can start with any type of box cake that you want. Literally any flavor, you pick it. Now, because I've used strawberry and I've used a white cake mix, I thought it would be fun to go ahead and do a chocolate. So we're gonna put the whole thing in here. I've got one cup of water and a half cup of oil. Add that. This is, you're just making it according to box directions, okay? Really, really simple. And then add in three eggs. And you just mix it together. Oh my gosh, I just panicked because I looked over at one of the other cakes that I've already made and I couldn't remember if I sprayed the dish. I did. I think it's all okay. I think we're okay. All right, while that's working, sorry, I know it's loud. Let's spray another nine by 13 pan. Then pour your batter into your pan. Just like you're making a regular nine by 13 cake. Now this just bakes on 350 degrees between 18 and 22 minutes, just until it is nice and done. You don't wanna overcook it, but you definitely wanna make sure it's not underdone either. You don't want any dough in there. I made this cake yesterday, just plain, and then just put it away for the evening. And now we're gonna get started on the next step. We are using these Benti cake molds. I got these on Amazon. I'll have them linked in the description box below. So take a spoon or a fork or something like that and just crumble up the cake that you made. Get it into nice crumbly pieces. We are going to use this buttercream frosting. Now, obviously you can make your own buttercream, but we're trying to make this as simple as possible today. I'm starting with about a half cup of buttercream and we're gonna mix all of that in. I'll be able to test the consistency of this if I mix it in the mixer. I feel like it'll be it's really going to pull together more evenly that way. And I do think we need a little bit more icing. You can see that it's starting to stick together and that's really what we're looking for. I'm hoping you can see the consistency here that it looks it's definitely not dry at all. It's really not even crumbly anymore. The instructions say to use a cookie scoop, but ours is just a tablespoon and a half cookie scoop. So I'm just gonna use a regular spoon and start to spoon this into the mold and you want to press it down, okay? Press down into each mold. So I'm assuming maybe like a two and a half tablespoon, two, two tablespoons would probably be the right size cookie scoop. Ours is only a tablespoon and a half, so I'd have to go in there multiple times anyway. Next, we take the scraper and you just scrape each one so that it is even across the top. And then you can put this back in your bowl because you can use it for the next round. Now the instructions say this mold needs to go into the fridge for one to three hours, but we actually found around 15 to 20 minutes was completely fine. We are using these melting chips that are by Ghirardelli, and I'm gonna mix it with a little bit of coconut oil just to give it some smoothness. So just melt it in the microwave for about 30 seconds, and then in 10 to 15 second increments after that. So I really used about a half teaspoon of coconut oil for maybe half of a bag of this. I didn't really measure it exactly. We're taking those pucks out of the refrigerator and we're gonna fill the larger tray each one of the molds get filled halfway with our melting chocolate. Then you take a puck that you've already refrigerated out, go ahead and place them and press them down into that mold a little bit. Not all the way, but you do want the uh, melting chocolate to come up over the sides. And honestly, depending on the amount that you put in there, it, once you get kind of used to this process, you'll see that the melting chocolate will come up over and fill the whole gap there. So in this one, you can see I'm adding a little bit more melting chocolate, but in the ones later on, after I got the hang of it, we didn't even have to do that. Take your scraper and scrape off any of the extra melting chocolate to just make sure that you get a nice flat bottom on this. And then these are gonna go into the freezer or the refrigerator. For the refrigerator, you're gonna need about 30 minutes or so. But honestly, we found in the freezer that these would harden up in five to seven minutes. 
While those are in the freezer, I'm gonna go ahead and fill this other tray back up again so that when the ones with the melting chocolate come out, we can go ahead and start that process all over again. All right, we're pulling these out of the freezer. This was our first attempt here and they look so good and they got better with each one. I am so surprised. Look how shiny they are, how pretty they are. They come right out of the mold. So we're just placing these in a tray. I actually ended up switching them to a cutting board just because we made several of them and this wasn't gonna be enough space. Now for our drizzling, we decided to go with a purple color. So we just mixed some red and blue with the leftover melting chocolate. I put that into a baggie and then cut off the smallest little tip. And then we're just drizzling that chocolate over them just to give them a nice pretty look. But there's so many things you could do here. You could go with sprinkles or little pearls. If you're really good with something like this melting chocolate, you could make some really pretty designs. We did try and make a heart on one of them. <laughs> it didn't turn out very pretty, but you can see my daughter's helping me and we were both thoroughly enjoying these. And you guys, they look stunning. They look like they came straight out of a bakery. Such a pretty dessert and such a neat thing to serve when you're having people over or if you need to take a dessert somewhere and they taste like a cake pop. So obviously they're gonna be delicious. You can see here the inside of this one. It's got that cake pop consistency. So good, really, really sweet. So you definitely have to like a sweet dessert for this one. Also, I have to tell you, I set a couple of them aside so that I could do a taste test and they all got eaten before the taste test could happen. So I don't have a taste test for you, but we all love these and I can guarantee they will be happening again in our house. I hope you enjoyed these cake box recipes as much as we did. Like I said before, if you wanna see how to make your own cake box mix, check out this video that I have right here. You're gonna get inspiration there and you're gonna get even more recipes. So encouragement, inspiration, more easy and delicious recipes. You got it right there. Our verse today comes from Titus 3.1. Remind the people to be subject to the rulers and authorities to be obedient, to be ready to do whatever is good, to slander no one and be peaceable and considerate and always be gentle toward everyone. I hope you guys enjoyed today's video. If you need more inspiration, check out the video that I have listed above here. You've got awesome recipes in this video. We love these and you guys will too. I hope you're having a great week.